Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape. In this video, we're reviewing the brand new Ride One Up Rift Fat Tire Electric Bike. So let's get into it. Before we get started, one quick favor. If you are looking to purchase any Ride One Up electric bike, we would really appreciate it if you use our affiliate link down in the description. It costs you nothing and helps us make videos like this one. Thank you so much for your support. We'll also include links to our popular electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and of course our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's get in to this review. I am so excited for this one. This is the brand new Ride One Up Rift. If you're familiar with the brand at all, they've focused on commuter electric bikes until recently. That all stopped when they released the Ride One Up Rev One, a moped style electric bike. One of the best value moped style electric bikes on the market. Be sure to check out our review if you're interested in that. And now we have a really great value priced fat tire electric bike. So I really view Ride One Up started in commuter electric bikes, perfected them over time, really since they were founded. And now they're kind of expanding into new electric bikes. And as someone who really likes value priced electric bike brands, I'm so excited that they got into the fat tire category, which of course is super popular among those purchasing electric bikes. Ride One Up is a direct to consumer brand. So you get the bike shipped to you in a box and then you can either assemble it yourself. Ride One Up actually has a very helpful video on assembling this electric bike, or you can take it to your trusted local bike shop. And that's where some of the savings comes in. Assembly on this electric bike was very similar from most of the electric bikes that I review, but I want to call it out because on some of the Ride One Up models, you actually have to install the front fork. That was not the case on the Rift. So I wanted to make sure everyone was aware. Let's talk about price. This bike is priced at $18.95, which puts it right in line with a ton of other fat tire electric bikes on the market. The Rift is offered in two different frame styles. The step through, as you see it here, recommended for riders five foot one to six foot two, and that has a 19 inch standover height. And the XR or high step model recommended for riders five foot six to six foot four, and that has a 29 and a half inch standover height. And just a note, I'm six feet tall, so when we get to the third person riding footage towards the end of the video, you can see how I fit on this electric bike. And I think their recommendations definitely on the step through are right in line because this bike fit me just fine. I was able to get full leg extension. The bike is offered in three different colorways in each frame style, forest green, Arctic white, as you see here, as well as graphite gray, much like other fat tire electric bikes with very rugged frames. This bike is heavy at 84 and a half pounds and has a 350 pound capacity. Now, speaking of capacity, one of the things that makes this fat tire electric bike unique, there are some other things that make it unique, of course, but one of them is this integrated rear rack with a 150 pound capacity. So this is more of a cargo fat tire electric bike that's a little bit more capable. You can see we have the passenger pad here. They actually sell a kit where you can get wheel guards and you can install pegs down here and the wheel guards attach to this point on each side of the frame. So if you wanted to take a child on here, you could. Polarized, it's just rated for a ton of cargo. Maybe you'd wanna add some handlebars that come off the seat post here. You also have these pannier hangers here. So very easy to hang some bags. And this seat is quick release, which is really handy. And there's a quick look at that rear rack. Again, 150 pounds capacity. Let's get into the other specs of this electric bike. Let's first talk about brakes. Ride one up, surely wanted to make sure you had enough stopping power. These are four piston hydraulic brakes, not something we see very often, at least on the levers, on the handlebars, they are LBN branded. And riding this electric bike around for a little bit, these brakes are very nice. And of course, hydraulic brakes are something that we kind of expect at closer to the $2,000 price point. So really happy with the brakes. They are paired with 180 millimeter rotors. We have a bolt-on front axle, 
So if you happen to get a flat, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to remove this front tire. Maybe if you wanna put it in the back of your vehicle, it'll just take extra time to remove the bolt. For tires, we have Kenda Crusade tires. These are tires that we see on many fat tire electric bikes. Of course, 26 by four inch wide tires and some knobs on here for off-roading. Speaking of off-roading, let's talk about this hydraulic suspension fork with 120 millimeters of travel. On the left of the fork, it says trauma suspension, no preload, but on the right, you do have a lockout. I'll push on the front suspension so you can get an idea of what you can expect. It feels pretty similar to a lot of the entry level forks that we see on some of these other fat tire electric bikes and certainly is going to help with comfort if you take this bike off road. Integrated front light. This is a Star Union light. In my experience with a lot of these front lights, if you are riding a lot at night, I highly recommend some of the high quality rechargeable lights to use as well. Moving on to the head tube. We have some very simple Ride One Up branding. They didn't put their badge on this electric bike, so maybe in the next generation. And I also wanted to call out that there are no mounts up here for a front rack. So that is another thing that I'd perhaps like to see in a second gen. Of course, it just allows you to have cargo both in the rear as well as the front. Let's talk about cable management. Ride One Up did an excellent job here. Cables are wrapped all the way from the handlebars and as the cables come into the down tube here, they are wrapped as well. Very clean look. Let's jump into the handlebars. Relatively straight handlebars. I do wanna call out on the other Ride One Up models when you opt for the step through, you also get swept back handlebars. That's not what they decided to do on their fat tire electric bike. So more of a aggressive riding position as opposed to a more upright. Though you could add an adjustable stem here. It certainly adds swept back handlebars depending on your preference. Here's a close-up of the LBN levers. There are motor cutoffs, so as soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. And you can tell just with the ball end here, you can tell these brakes are perhaps a little moped inspired, maybe a motorcycle inspired as well. We have locking ergonomic grips with a palm rest, very comfortable, nice to see that. The bike comes with a left-hand thumb throttle as most of the Ride One Up models do. Moving on to the right side, we have a Shimano trigger shifter eight speeds, which is nice. A lot of times you'll see seven speeds. And this is a step up from what you see on many electric bikes, the basic thumb shifter. And I personally prefer the trigger shifters. Let's jump into the display. On a lot of the Ride One models, they opt for smaller LCD screens located on the left-hand side of the handlebars. So it allows you to put some accessories, which is nice. Some people prefer larger displays, just personal preference. Some of their displays are black and white, but this is the color one. Ride One Up branding when you turn it on. Now to turn the headlight on, you're going to hold the pedal assist up button. There's actually a light indicator and the screen does go slightly dimmer when you turn the lights on. Pedal assist levels, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. In the bottom middle of the screen, you have wattage of power, which is helpful. Miles per hour, front and center battery capacity as well as the current voltage trip in the bottom right hand corner and odometer in the bottom left hand corner hitting the power button in the middle here will give you additional information max speed and average speed and time and back to odometer now there are some advanced settings that you can get into by holding the pedal assist up and down button at the same time the first setting is display setting. I'll give you a look at that. And just be mindful, if you are making changes, you do wanna make sure you know what you're doing. Of course, trip reset, you can reset the trip if you want to, but some of these other things you don't necessarily wanna be messing with. We also have information, which gives you the software version, advanced settings, which is gonna ask for a password. Password is going to be one, two, one, two. Here's a look at the advanced settings. Now, what you're probably going to focus on is one, the power set. And I really like that Ride One Up has this in their display because if I hit the center button here, you can see that you can actually adjust how much motor power you get in each pedal assist. And that means this bike is fully customizable. Now in the upcoming first person riding footage, I'm gonna leave this as is. But if you want and you do decide to buy this bike, you can go ahead and 
make tweaks to this to your liking, which is awesome. Again, a lot of the other settings here, you're not going to want to touch unless you really know what you're doing. And the second thing that most people are going to care about is overriding the top speed. That's on the next page. And I'm gonna change that up to 28 miles per hour. Again, be sure you're following all your local laws and regulations, but in the first person riding footage, I'll really put this bike to the test and see how it gets up to 28 miles per hour. And I'll go back and exit. And that's the display. It's simple, color LCD screen. I'll briefly show off the branding around this bike. Pretty minimalistic rift step through on the bottom of the down tube designed in California. We also have Ride One Up branding on the side of the down tube, but overall a very clean look from Ride One Up. And I think this white looks really nice. Let's talk about the battery. First off, we have a charger port with a rubber cap on the right side. So you can charge the battery both on and off the bike. The battery is nicely integrated into the frame. I'll unlock it. And then there is a latch here, which will allow the battery to come out completely. Sometimes you do need to move the tire a little bit to get full clearance. Now this battery is absolutely a massive 48 volt, 20 amp power battery going to give you tons of range. And again, as we see on many of the Ride One Up electric bikes, this is a re-engine pack. So this is a standard battery pack that you might actually see on other electric bikes. Now to put it back in, simply insert the bottom first and snap it into place and you can remove the key. For pedals, we have the standard Welgo pedals that we see on many electric bikes. You can of course get some with a bigger platform, perhaps more grip or something that color matches your electric bike, but these do get the job done. Burley kickstand located towards the rear. It is adjustable as well, and it's located out of the way of the pedals as most electric bikes are. So when you're moving around, you don't have to worry about the pedals coming in contact with it. Now, if you're looking down here, some people at first glance might think this is a mid-drive. It in fact is a hub drive electric bike. This is using a cadence sensor, but what is nice, if I'm not mistaken, the controller is located in here. So if you ever needed to replace it, it's a little bit more accessible in these style of frames. I mentioned the wheel guards, that's where these attach. We'll throw a link in the description to the passenger kit that Ride One Up sells. And then of course you have the peg mount here. A look at the four piston hydraulic disc brake in the rear. The bike comes equipped with both front and rear plastic fenders. And I already talked about the integrated rack, 150 pound capacity, really like that. If you're looking at their other models, this is kind of a similar design that they went with the Cafe Cruiser, which was more of a beach cruiser electric bike that also had lots of cargo capability. Again, the passenger kit fits on that electric bike as well. Going back to the rear, this light is actuated by the brakes. And if you turn the lights on, it does go slightly brighter when you hit the brakes. This light, like many I review, is barely visible during the day. Of course, at night it adds a little bit more visibility. Again, rechargeable rear lights are a good safety precaution if you are riding a lot at night. And if it shows up in the camera that the light is blinking, it does not, in fact, blink. For the rear rack, Ride One Up includes this bungee strap, which can be handy. Moving on to the motor. This is a 750 watt motor. Stay tuned for the first person riding footage and we'll really see what this bike can do. According to Ride One Up's website, they're using a 30 amp controller, but I saw in the display that it's set at 25 amps. For gearing, we have 11 to 32 teeth in the rear. Again, an eight speed. I'll talk a little bit more about how that feels with the cadence sensor, especially as we get above 20 miles per hour. In the front, we have a single sided, 44 tooth metal chain ring. For derailleur, we have Shimano Altus, which we see on so many electric bikes, especially in the affordable category, in my experience, gets the job done and going to be fine for a vast majority of riders. It does have a barrel adjuster here in case you need to make slight adjustments to it. I'll show off Ride One Up's chainstay protector. They've included this on their various electric bikes. It's branded Ride One Up and take your riding to the next level. And this just, prevents your chain from nicking up your frame, especially if you're going to be taking this bike off-road. So it's a nice little touch that I like to see. Behind the seat tube, we have a class two sticker, 750 watt motor with a top speed of 20 miles per hour, whether you're using pedal assist or throttle. Of course, that's how the bike comes shipped, can be overridden to a class three electric bike. 
Let's talk about the saddle. Pretty cushioned saddle, though if you find that you want something more comfortable, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list where I share the most popular ones that I see people purchase. With that, I think we should take this bike for a ride. Let's get into some first person riding footage and see what the new Rift can do. All right, first person riding footage on the Ride One Up Rift. I have to say riding over here, I'm starting to understand a little bit why they went with four piston hydraulic brakes. It's nice to have the increased stopping power, we'll put it that way. Let's get into the test. I have the speedometer app by Cool Nix for GPS speed to compare to the display from Ride One Up. First test will be throttle only. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Throttle only test. Six, 10, 15, 18, 19. And I feel the motor cutting off there. And it looks like it's going to hold me at about 20 miles per hour. Display from Ride One Up is reading right at 20 miles per hour. And I would imagine the GPS is 19 point something. And sometimes the GPS speed also isn't perfect. Keep in mind, this bike does come shipped as a class two electric bike. And earlier in the walk around, I showed you how to override the settings. So this is a class three electric bike. So we should be able to get up to 28 miles per hour while pedaling. Also keep in mind, I did keep the settings for how much power you get out of each pedal sys level as they come set from the factory. And that can be of course adjusted. All right, and I like to start from a stop just so I can get an idea of the engagement and how fast the motor kicks on, how much power it's giving you. And I would say that's a nice and easy takeoff. Some bikes will jerk you a little bit more and I like the way that they have this tune because it's gonna be a little bit more accessible uh, to new riders. Uh, going about 10, 11 miles an hour, keep in mind this is a cadence sensor. I would probably shift up second, third gear, maybe even fourth gear. I prefer a little bit slower cadence and providing some effort going about 13 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Just feel a little bit more from the motor there going about 14, 15. I could shift up to fifth gear. Again, really like these trigger shifters from Shimano. Perform really well, 17 miles an hour. Looks like we're getting close to 18 miles an hour. All right, pedal assist level three. I imagine we're going to get close to 20 miles per hour. Seventeen, eighteen, and I would maybe shift up here to six gear. Ride one up display showing twenty point five. All right, Pelsis level four. 21. And again, I'm just pedaling at a very leisurely cadence, nice and easy. Maybe could go to seventh gear here, going about 24 miles an hour. And let's see what this bike can do. Pedals to level five. And what I really like is that even at 26 miles an hour, I am not ghost pedaling, still providing some effort. And I still have that one extra gear to go. I could, seventh or eighth gear feels pretty comfortable. And there is 28 miles an hour and it's actually pretty windy today as well. Uh, that was 28 of course on the ride one up display. GPS is showing about 25, 26, 27. All right, so in my opinion, very impressive power from this electric bike. So we know how it performs on flat ground. But let's see what it can do up our large hill climb test. Let's get into the throttle only test. This is the hill that I test out the electric bikes that I review. Sometimes you'll see different hills. 
We'll put a picture of the hill on the screen because the GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it actually is. We'll also throw the specs up there as well. And another thing that I've noticed from the Ride One Up display is that right now in throttle only, it's pegging it at 999 watts. It actually doesn't go to four digits. Again, 750 watt motor that peaks very obviously much higher than that. Uh, just something that I wanted to, to share as I've been riding this. And I have to imagine the performance is going to be very good <laughs> given how this motor has been performing. 18 miles an hour, 17. And just cruising up the hill, no problem. And 17 miles an hour might be the minimum speed, which is most definitely on the higher end of what we see as minimum speed. And keep in mind, this is a heavy fat tire electric bike, lots of rolling resistance. Oh, there's 16 and back to 17. So the fact that, I mean, I'm impressed that any e-bike can make it up the hill, but let alone a fat tire bike. So as far as hill performance, this bike has it, but it is an electric bike after all. So I'm gonna head back down the hill and we'll do the same thing while pedaling. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. Coming down the hill, I was going about 30 miles an hour and I did slam on the brakes and as expected, these brakes function just fine. And you actually need to be a little bit careful because they can lock up the rear tire. And you don't want to lose control. So we'll start off the hill in pedal assist level one in first gear. I imagine we'll be going I imagine most people will want to go in a higher pedal assist level going up a hill. And going about seven miles an hour, a bit of a workout, I would say. I would most definitely go in a higher pedal assist level. Let's go into pedal assist level two. Feel just a little bit of a boost there. Still working pretty hard. Speed about the same at seven miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three can feel and hear the motor a little bit more there. Going about eight. Getting close to nine miles an hour according to the Ride One Up display. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. Again, still in first gear. Feeling some relief from the legs now. Nine, 10 miles an hour. I could probably shift up second or maybe even third gear. 10. 11 miles an hour or so. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. And that's where I really feel the most power. <laughs> I'm gonna shift up fourth, fifth. <laughs> and there's that 16 miles an hour. Ride one up display seems slightly higher going 18. And fourth or fifth gear feels pretty comfortable. Again, getting some, a little bit of a workout, but not working too terribly hard. And of course we know what it can do on throttle alone. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Ride One Up Rift. It would have been so easy for Ride One Up to enter the fat tire e-bike category with an e-bike that matched the specs of many fat tire e-bikes just at a better price point. And that bike would have sold just fine. We don't need more fat tire e-bikes to choose from, but I'll always welcome a fat tire e-bike from a reputable brand like Ride One Up. That alone is a great selling point. But Ride One Up went, in my opinion, above and beyond. On paper, it's maybe not as apparent. Sure, the four piston hydraulic disc brakes are superior to two piston brakes that we find on other e-bikes, especially considering the 1895 price point, but it's the motor power where I was most surprised. It's one of the most powerful 48 volt fat tire e-bikes I've reviewed 
And that 95 newton meters of torque was very apparent in the hill climb test. Plus, if you desire a true class three fat tire e-bike capable of 28 miles per hour while pedaling without ghost pedaling, the options are fewer. The ability to customize the motor power in each pedal assist level is an underappreciated feature. Powering that 750 watt motor is a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery tucked nicely into the frame for a nice clean look. That capacity isn't unheard of at this price point, but it is a large pack. Ride on up stated range is 45 to 60 miles, which on the high end might be possible on the lowest pedal assist level and providing plenty of your own effort. Another differentiator on the Rift is the rear rack, welded right to the frame. It's more capable than most with its 150 pound capacity. Good for passengers with their passenger kit, which is a nice option for those that need it, but probably more than likely, it's just nice to not ever have to worry if it's overweighted. Which for those that plan to take this e-bike where it's most at home, like out in the woods, is a nice selling point. A Connect Plus basket for the rear rack is an optional accessory, or you can equip the Rift with Ride One Up panniers, both linked down in the description. And finally, I like the two frame options, my recommendation being the step through for its accessibility, but hey, if you prefer swinging your leg over the top tube, the XR is a fine option too. The Shimano Altus derailleur is considered standard at this point, being offered on a majority of fat tire e-bikes, but I'll give Ride One Up credit for including the nicer Shimano trigger shifter. The hydraulic suspension fork with 120 millimeters of travel felt similar to others we've tested, and the 26 by four inch wide Kenda Crusade tires are great for off-roading. Many though are purchasing fat tire e-bikes as a do anything e-bike, and it's hard to find fault in that decision. Sure, it's a heavy electric bike, but that extra weight disappears under you with a strong motor. The Rift comes equipped with all the accessories you'd expect at an e-bike approaching $2,000, fenders, and of course, front and rear integrated lights. If I've helped you decide that the Rift or any other Ride One Up e-bike is right for you, do us a quick favor and use our link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel directly, so thank you. Ride One Up, as usual, has delivered on their company mantra, the best value electric bikes. It's hard to find any faults in the Rift, but if there's something you think they missed, let us know in the comments section below We've reviewed all of the Ride One Up models and will continue to do so. Support is US based and as far as direct to consumer brands go, they're one we can easily recommend. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.